Well, uh, I'm gonna, today I'm going to do a little bit of a repainting and I suppose an unboxing at the same time. So this is one of the uh, character options figure sets that were exclusive to the chain of stores in the UK called B&M. Um, and <clears throat> they do reboxed, repainted figures. So they sort of mix and match parts of other figures to make new figures or just repaint a new fi uh, an old figure. So this one you get uh, an Auton from Spearhead in Space, uh, Tom Baker from Talons of Wen Chiang, and he's in John Pertwee's uh, outfit, which they've just repainted. And then also you get the Brigadier in the original Season 7 uh, uniform that uh, Unit wore, except it isn't, it's actually the RAF battle dress that uh, Captain Jack figure was moulded for with the Briggs head from his more familiar green uniform in the set. So what I'm going to do is get, get the figures out, we'll have a look at them, but I'm going to repaint the face on the Brigadier and perhaps a little bit of detail on his uniform and we'll see what we can do with it. So I'll open these up and then we'll come back. So I've unboxed the figures. Uh, the Auton is very nice, I didn't have the original one of these, so he's nice, looks plasticky, but then he's meant to. Could the Nestines take control of a little plastic figure? Um, so he's nice, and I'm not going to repaint him, he's just going to go on a shelf next to my other stuff. Uh, this is the standard uh, Tom Baker head, but you can see where the the sort of cheapness of these figures comes through because you can see it's a moulded on tie but they've just painted a stripe because he's wearing in this one he's wearing more of a, a bootleg tie um, it's just John Pertwee's clothing um, it's not very well painted I might repaint this one but I don't know I just shove him in the cupboard um, but the one we're looking at today is the Brigadier and again you can see so there's an RAF badge under the medal, so I've just paint stamped over it. Um, the Brigadier, I don't think wore a cravat. Certainly, well, he might have done later on, but I don't think he did with this uniform. Um, so it really should have a collar and a tie. But they've just, I mean, it's, it's not great paint. I mean, look at that badge. It's just a blob. And he looks like someone's tweaked his ass, doesn't it? It's like, whoa! You can make a little picture of it. Week. Um, it's really crudely painted. I'm going to keep this colour because I think it would be difficult to paint over this colour. We'll try and add some detail in that. But first, we're going to try and get the head off. I'm hoping it will just pop off. If not, I might have to heat it up. Oh, it's almost off. Let me just try it off screen. Get a bit of leverage. Nope, I'm going to have to heat that up, so I'm going to go and dump it in some hot water. We'll get his head off. Okay, so I got his uh, head off. Um, I've got a picture here of the Briggs uniform, so you can see how completely different it is. So, <clears throat> these uniforms were uh, tailored for the programme. They weren't just British, uh, British Army battle dress, whereas this one is. So you can see the collar's all wrong, should be lapelled. The pockets should be flat, there shouldn't be any pleats in them. The uh, belt just ends, so it hasn't got the proper battle dress belt. So this would need a lot of work to make it accurate. Um, I'm tempted, I'm tempted to carve all this off, rebuild it up in Milliput, um, which I think I might do. Uh, today though, we're just gonna paint the, the face just to get that looking a bit better. Um, but first off, because when you heat these up, inside the neck there's a smaller hole, and these are sandwiched when the front and back are put on, these are sandwiched in. I won't be able to get that back in. I don't really want to heat it up again to put it in, so I'm going to cut this, this ring off, um, just so that we can uh, get it back in. Just going to use some snips. goes in, yeah, that goes in, holds in, so that's good. So all we're going to do is undercoat in my basic flesh tone, which I make by mixing 
a few drops of Vallejo Light Flesh with Citadel Cadian Flesh Tones. So we're going to do that and base coat all over. Yeah, so we'll let that dry, give it a couple of more coats, and then we'll come back and start doing some shading. Well, I decided I'd do the body anyway. There's no point doing the face if you're not going to have an accurate uniform. So all I've done, taken my scalpel, carved off the edges there, the lapels, reshaped the collars, uh, carved off the pleats, carved off the belt, reshaped the square bit here and then I'm going to build up collar and tie lapels using milliput which is like a two-part epoxy putty so you mix part A with part B uh, and it gives you a, something that in about two hours dries to a rock hard substance you can mold it um, texture wise it's a bit like plasticine um, so I'm just gonna mix some of that together and then Build up some of this detail. So the worst part is you have to knead this stuff forever. So you break off small. Sorry about the rustling. You break off small part, equal parts of the two, the two bits, and then it's just a case of mixing them until you get one even colour. So let me mix that and we'll come back. Okay, let's so move the Briggs head. So we have the Melipat, you see it's all one uniform colour. Um, so now we can build up some detail. So to start off with, I'm just going to give him a bit of a tie. So I'm just going to use one part for knot. the tie and all I use to mould with is a toothpick so you find one and you know what I had a pot of toothpicks I think oh, there we are right at the back so I just buy pots of TV you get like three of these pots for a quid from Poundland I have got some metal moulding tools but I don't like using it on Millipup because if you leave a bit on and forget about it it's there for life so I just wet the toothpick, lick it a bit, and then that means it doesn't stick to the milliput and you can start putting a bit of detail into it. So this is the, this isn't the knot, this is the body of the tie, so I'm just going to force it in. Then we're going to make the uh, collars. And for this, I'm just going <coughs> to, pardon me, I'm just going to sort of shape it beforehand just to get the rough. Oh dear, stick to nice. It sticks to everything. This stuff. You drop any in the carpet, get it up quick. And the good thing is, because it sticks quite well, whatever you do is pretty permanent. Although you can run a bit of super glue in once it's dry if you want to. There we go, that's not too bad. So now I'm going to build up the lapels. I'm going to do 
a similar thing, just slightly larger. So again, flatten it out. So I'm going to tidy it up, um, but that just makes it look a bit better. So we love to, it, dry, it takes about three hours to dry, so it's going to take me longer to do this video than I thought, but in the meantime, we'll paint the head. So, head's pretty much dry. Let's get rid of all this milli packs if it sticks to them. It's going to ruin it. going to uh, go and wash my hands we'll come back maybe put all over it and then we'll... okay so just gonna add some flesh shading using my Reichland flesh shade to get old faithful all we're going to do is flow that in okay, it's everywhere. flow that in to the parts of the body parts of the face dry and we can come back and shade that okay so the wash is dry so what we're going to do is blend it out slightly and all we do is use a very lightened very lightly lightened flesh tone lightened with a bit of white and dry brushed and we just blend in until we're just left with the suggestion of dark patches okay. and then while I got the white out I'm going to lighten the flesh shade even more to do the highlights Tiny little dry brush and a red on the cheeks. And then I'm going to paint the white eyeballs in. Use a bit of flesh shade. Tidy up top of that eye. There we go. And I'm going to paint the Briggs moustache. And he's got pretty much jet black hair. But I am going to mix black with a tiny bit brown because black on its own on the figure does look a bit unusual.
just more on my brush. Things in this side of it. I'm gonna do blue eyes because I think that looks good on a finger. While that's drying, I'm going to paint his hair. So his hair is going to be the same brownie black that I mixed, but round the sideburns here, it's a bit more brownie. So I'll mix. And then I'm going to add a black dot to the pupil and a little line above it. It looks quite sad. It looks like the monsters have won this week. So I'm just going to run some more flesh wash just into the mouth because we've lost a little bit and I also need to do his lip colour so actually I'll do his lip colour first and that's just flesh colour with a little bit of red in so for the beret I need because I'm going to have to use the same tan colour I mix for the beret as for the uh, uniform um, Try and lighten some dandry dust, I think. Don't let that dry. And then we'll come back and do a few finishing touches. Okay, so the miller part has dried off. So what we've got to do is undercoat in that same colour. So I'm going to mix some of that. I mean, that was again just dandry dust and white. So we'll do a couple of coats there and then come back. Okay, so I've undercoated this a couple of times. Uh, so what we're going to do now is run some flesh wash into the detail. So <clears throat> painted the hat badge white. So we're going to do try and paint on the uh, unit lettering. So it says unit, it's tiny, best as I can do with my dodgy eyes. And I just want to use a bit of white. I'm going to fill this in anyway with some lines, but I just want to... And then also on the arm, I've built a little unit badge, so I'm going to paint that. A lightened version of the uniform colour just to do a bit of dry brushing on the uniform now. Looks 
there. So now I'm going to paint his shirt, and he's got sort of just a pale blue shirt. Wow, very pale green. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of green. Just going to use Warg Flesh. Drying. I'm going to go back to the cap badge and we're just going to try and paint in some lines on this. What I'm going to do is dry brush some white just over the hair and the cap. Not looking too bad. Looks very worried, doesn't he? <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, put some gloss varnish on the eyes and the lips, matte varnish everything else, and then when we come back, I'll paint the tie, and then uh, we can. Bit of varnish on there to bring it all together and then we'll put them together see what you look okay so what i've done is paint the collar in a tie uh, i painted the arm patch i added his uh, lanyard back in just using some uh like sewing thread just goes around i painted his insignia on his epaulets so I think he's looking all right. I think it's uh, it was worth doing. It was a much more complicated one than I thought when I was going into it, but uh, it's a bit more accurate now. Uh, the colour didn't match too badly. It's as it's dried, paint does change colour, so there is a slight shade. So I might paint the arms at some point in the future just to match it. But in in real life, it doesn't. Uh, it's not quite as noticeable. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more of these, then uh, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you've got any suggestions for conversions or if you want to see any other figures being painted. Um, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks then. Bye.